So you ever wonder what those anthropomorphized animals are doing running around the No Earth comics? Let's talk about it. My name's Eagle. I'm the publisher and the line editor at No Earth Comics. Today we're going to talk about what we uh, on No Earth call genetic constructs. And let's go ahead and get something out of the way first. We're going to be talking about some sensitive subjects because No Earth is no Earth is not a politically correct refuge. We've stated this on the website. We have stated this within the comics. So we're going to be talking about some things that some people may find objectionable. Oh well. Within the world of No Earth, the South didn't win the Civil War. But they did fight the North to enough of a standstill that the North decided to back off. So while the Confederate States of America claims that they won, the South, or the North, simply claims that the Southern States are the states in rebellion. They have never acknowledged the Confederate States of America as a separate entity. And this leads to some interesting situations. For instance, slavery. In the Confederate States, slavery remained legal for another 80 years after the end of the Civil War. And it didn't do so because of practicality. Eli Whitney had basically killed slavery. The Industrial Revolution basically killed slavery because at a certain point in time, a, an agrarian-based culture becomes an, an, an agrarian-based slave culture becomes economically unfeasible in the face of modernization and mechanization. So the institution, excuse me, the peculiar institution of slavery maintained because of tradition. And when it was finally abolished and blacks were made second-class citizens instead of property, there existed a void. And this void was eventually filled in the mid-60s with the introduction of genetically modified or genetically engineered constructs, geners for short. And these were human-animal hybrids constructed in the lab and originally engineered to not be able to breed. But as Jeff Goldblum once famously said in a movie, nature will find a way. So the, there are more and more geners within the world that can breed true. So the CSA wound up with geners that they could use for servants, that they could use for, for military, for security, for... Uh, whatever they needed in the way of servants, in the way of chattel slavery. And this is, this is part of the reality of No Earth. This is something that the South is very proud of, that they no longer hold humans in bondage, never mind the fact that they're holding human-animal hybrids in bondage. But we'll get into that. Actually, no, we're not going to get into that. We'll save that for some of the stories that we're telling through the comics. But what we are going to get into is how the geners work. Now, gener, there are actually two types of genetically engineered constructs, and that is what everybody refers to as geners, which are human-animal mixes, and ubers. And Ubers are humans that are modified for increased strength, increased stamina, increased senses, uh, basically trying to get the best possible results from the human genome and maybe adding a few things into it from here and there. But we're not talking about Ubers today. We're talking about geners. So... The geners break down into three basic categories. You have the coverts, and a covert, you're not going to be able to tell at first glance that this is a gener. 
their skin may be slightly hairier than normal. Uh, they may have a slightly odd set of eyes. Their canine teeth might be a little bit longer. Their ears might be a little bit tufted. All of these things that can be fixed with a little bit of minor surgery to make them indistinguishable from humans. And the reason for this is spies, recon, uh, the ability to infiltrate. There's all sorts of reasons why a company is going to want a gener that can do this. Next up is the overts, and these are also known as hybrids and moreaus. Yes, that is a direct steal from the island of Dr. Moreau. It's public domain. We're stealing it. So, so the overts, the hybrids, the moreaus, are obviously a mix between human and animal. And they are they're what you're going to notice in the comics. For instance, in War Mage, Cassandra is a leopard gener. And in there's going to be some gener characters introduced in Pride, and they're going to be lion geners. And there's going to be we've already seen some geners in the background in The Law of the Jungle. Uh, we've seen a tiger gener in The Shadow War. So these geners have been showing up in various No Earth comics. And they are used for soldiers, uh, security, bodyguards, uh, sex workers. They are used for household servants. They are used for all of the things that the southern aristocracy wants chattel slaves for. And they can tell themselves that they are no longer enslaving humans. They're enslaving genetically engineered constructs. And this is built into the Confederate set of laws. Now then, outside of the Confederacy, well, we'll talk about that in a moment. The last type of uh, gener is enhanced. And this is basically a straight-up animal that has been enhanced with, with a higher level of intelligence, uh, oftentimes a voice box, the ability to understand spoken commands, and in some cases even converse and relay information. And in some cases, the most prized possession in the animal kingdom, thumbs. The ability to manipulate objects and technology. So, the, these three types of geners are pretty standard. And there's some that blur the lines, and we're not going to worry about that right now. So, outside of the CSA and a few other countries, mostly South American countries, some African countries, and uh, a few European countries, Genetic constructs are not property. They are sentient beings and they are free. In a couple of places they are second-class citizens, but for the most part they are afforded the same rights and privileges as any other uh, type of person within on the planet. So this is one of the reasons for the safeguards that are built into geners by the companies that make them such as explosives, such as tracking devices, such as different types of ways to keep a gener from becoming a runaway. And indeed, in places like the Republic of Texas and the United States, there's a thriving underground to get geners out of the CSA. Yes, history repeats itself. So, in some cases, companies will sell geners outside of the Confederacy knowing that they are going to be free as soon as they cross the border. For instance, in War Mage, Cassandra's parents had purchased her as part of an adoption and wound up raising her as their own daughter. 
Cassandra has a few issues with this, but we're going to get into that in future issues. But within these countries, a genre is normal. There's enough of them around that you don't stare. They're not common on the streets, but there's enough of them that people accept them. They've made it into movies, they've made it onto TV, sports teams, so on and so forth. And outside of the Confederacy, superpowers and magic and psionics and all are common enough that geners become just another type of special. And that gives them a certain ability to blend in that they might not have otherwise. For instance, uh, in The Law of the Jungle, The Law of the Jungle is dealing with a family of werewolves, and the world in general knows that werewolves exist. So a gener is not that special. They can't even change back to human. So, the important part about geners is that they give us an allegory. We can project whatever we need to as writers and creators onto geners for the purpose of story. And this is part of the reason for having the geners, in addition to the fact that they're just cool. But they can be they can represent an ethnic group, they can represent a religious group, they can represent a sexuality, they can represent all sorts of different things, and we can project onto them so that we can tell a story that deals with a social or political issue, but take it outside of the triggering parts of dealing with that social issue in our standard political discourse. One of the problems with the advancement of political correctness is that certain things have become so taboo that we can't even have an honest discussion about them without somebody getting called a name, without somebody being called some sort of bigot. And what allegory allows us to do is have that discussion without the accompanying baggage, the emotional and uh, cultural baggage that comes with the actual subject, we can discuss it in allegory. And if you want to see this in action, the entire uh, original Star Trek series, almost every episode was dealing with some sort of social or political issue using allegory. And this is one thing that science fiction has always done. Fantasy should have done it as well, but they haven't. Instead, they've gone the entire opposite direction of, and have gone straight into stereotypes and tropes uh, to the point that a lot of the portrayals of the fantasy races become caricatures and stereotypes, and so we don't get to have the honest discussion using fantasy. There are exceptions to that, don't get me wrong. But science fiction leaps into this. And as an example, the movie and TV series of Alien Nation, even the title lets you know that we're going to be using this group of aliens as allegory. Well, in No Earth, we're going to be able to use the geners the same way. The geners themselves are cool because they're going to show up any place where there's action. They're going to show up in movies. They're going to show up on TV shows. But more importantly, they're going to show up in military. They're going to show up on police forces. They're going to show up security, uh, spies. Anything that involves action and adventure is going to see more than its proportionate number of geners because they're going to be naturally drawn to this. And they're going to have the skills beyond what a normal human has. Uh, you will see them on super teams. You will see, you know, there's just this wide range of things that we can do with geners within the stories. So this is, this is part of what makes 
the geners within no earth interesting. This is part of what makes them useful as story elements. But also, what we're trying to do is avoid the stereotypical, characterized versions of anthropomorphized animals that we so often see in comics and in this type of media. In fact, that this is one of the things that we don't ever want to see from our writers, and that is using the geners for comic relief. Yes, they can be funny. Yes, they can tell jokes. Yes, they can get the snarky lines in. Cassandra gets snarky lines in all the time. That's part of her personality. But they should never be the comic relief. They should never be played for the cute factor. They should never be played for the sex appeal factor. Yes, you're going to see some very sexy geners. But you're not going to see that as their defining characteristic. You're not going to see... Oh, one of the things that the, the various companies within the CSA do is they specifically engineer geners to be less intelligent than humans somewhere around an 80 IQ. This is only on some geners. And the reason for this is they don't want them to be smarter than the people that are controlling them. This is not true on all geners, obviously, because a lot of the things that geners do need a high level of intelligence, so some of them are actually smarter than humans. This is... The CSA is having severe problems within the No Earth world. Uh, across the border, you have the Republic of Texas, which is, libertarian, uh, which is a libertarian form of government, and to the north, you have the USA, which is a personal responsibility progressive form of government, and the CSA itself is a theological conservative form of government. So the CSA is beleaguered, on two of its four sides by these governments that are actively working against it. And in there is an active vigilante underground in the CSA that also works with the Gener underground. You have an underground railroad leading out of the CSA that moves Geners out of the CSA across the border into either of the other two countries where they can be free. Uh, do the necessary surgeries and all to remove the safeguards, and bingo, you've got a free gener. These are all part of how this works within No Earth, and none of it is particularly pleasant once you scratch the surface and start taking a deeper look at how this works. And none of it is supposed to be particularly pleasant. But what it does is it provides a sound context for the stories that we're wanting to tell. So this is, this is something that a casual reader is not going to really fall into yet. Uh, we have a possible pitch coming from a writer dealing directly with these issues. In fact, that's part of why I'm making this video today, is to give that writer a better, a better understanding of how geners work before they start writing the pitch. So, this is the basic overview. Geners are liked and respected outside the CSA. Within the CSA, they are considered property. And this is going to affect the way that they react to people. This is going to affect the way that people react to them. And this is something that we're going to explore more as... We've, we've got six titles in production right now, and a seventh is going to be coming... Well, actually, we have seven titles in production right now, and an eighth is on its way. We've already got the concept art coming for it. But as each title comes in, you're going to see more and more of this interconnectedness and more and more of the things that bind all the titles together starting to affect them. So that about covers this subject for today. If you've got questions, comments, please leave them below. 
I will answer each and every one of them. I want to hear what you think on this. I want to hear how how you feel about these issues. Uh, even if you disagree with us, let's hear it. Open discussion is the way that we do things. So, thank you for tuning in, and I will talk to you next time.